So this is like the world's most important freezer. It is, really. <laughs> <laughs> the most important room in the world, someone has said. These are pretty big claims for a place located just 1,300 kilometers or 800 miles from the North Pole. But then, this is no ordinary place. It's the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. Well, actually, this, this is just its front door. Inside the seed vault are a series of tunnels. It's not actually that cold right here, but as we go deeper, it is only going to get colder. This is Bente. You're an engineer, Bente? Yes, I am. You're going to show us where to go? <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. <Next> door. <laughs> How many doors are there? Uh, one, two, three, four, five doors until we are into the secret room. Five doors to the secret room. Whoa. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> These are the lengths of tunnel that take you down into the seed vault. This facility was built to last around 200 years and withstand earthquakes and explosions. It was placed on the side of a mountain, so even if all the ice on Earth melts, it will still be above sea level. There are three separate vault rooms where seeds are stored, but only one of them is in use right now, and it's buried over 120 meters from the front door. The whole point of putting the vault so deep in this mountain is to put it within permafrost. So all around me, the Earth naturally stays around minus four or minus five all year round. And that way, if something did happen and the coolant stopped flowing here, there was no power, then, well, behind these doors, it would still remain probably, you know, minus four or minus five Celsius forever. Assuming, of course, global temperatures don't rise that much. This place is sometimes called the Doomsday Vault because even in a worst case scenario, it should preserve the diversity of the world's food crops. Really in the mountain, surrounded by permafrost. And uh, here is a cross tunnel that leads to three vault doors. Vault number one is up there, vault number two, and this is the one that's actually being used, and then vault number three. It's pretty amazing to look up and see ice-covered ceilings and walls everywhere. The Svalbard Global Seed Vault works essentially like a bank vault. It's, yeah, it's it almost is. yeah, because uh, the seeds lay in uh, boxes like this. These boxes are sealed when they come to Svalbard, and, and none of us are, uh, can open it. We, uh, we put it to the security system at the airport just to check that it isn't any explosives or, or anything in it, but it's work, it works like a bank box. So we, can, we can't open the, this. Only the depositor can open and take out their seeds. So you <laughs> don't open any of the seeds, any of the boxes that no, come here? No. Well, how do you know that people are really depositing the seeds like barley that they say they are and not other things? Uh, just because they have signed a contract that says it. So, so <laughs> we, we, can, we can't uh, be sure, but uh, of course we trust them. Would there be uh, uh, seeds for some crops that people might consider illicit, like marijuana? That is said that that shall, shall not be in here. No, uh, no drugs and also no gene-modified material. No genetically modified seeds go in here? Yeah, Norway has asked for that no, not uh, genetical material is uh, kept in here. Are there any particularly strange crops? Has anyone deposited anything that's really odd or weird? Uh, no, nothing weird is, uh, is in here, but we, have, uh, we, have, we get some questions from people who want to put in their own uh, private seeds. I also have had, had letters from men wanting to put their gene material in here? <laughs> that is really strange, and, and we don't answer those. This is the door to the vault, and behind here there are nearly a million different varieties of seeds from all over the world, kept at minus 18 degrees Celsius. You know how I can tell that it's minus 18 degrees in here? You can actually feel the moisture in your nose freeze, so your nostrils get all stiff. Yeah, and I see behind you we have some Canadian seeds, which is exciting yeah. for me because I am Canadian. So what sort of things do we have from Canada? I'm really not, not sure because uh, this box uh, on the outside doesn't tell what is in it. But uh, these, these numbers here uh, are connected to a database on the internet, so you can go in there 
afterwards. There you go. Yeah, and we can go you can find see. out. Then you can find out what has Canada got stored yes. in the seed vault. What are we looking at right here? Yeah, it's like a bank vault except everything that you've put in there is publicly available. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> These are the coolest boxes, I think. They are from North Korea. Oh handmade, my goodness. Handmade boxes. They really look nice. like they come from the 1960s or yeah. something. Do you think? <laughs> yeah, they do. They have been They uh, built them made. specially. Yeah, they they built them specially because they got the measurements of how big should the boxes be and these are are built exactly on those measurements. And here you see North Korea is placed on the same shelves as the U uh, USA is just on the back there. Oh, it's on the back yeah. side. And you have South Korea just on the back. So here they are like in uh, small United Nations, deep in the mountains of Svalbard. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the last few bare shelves in Vault 2. Once the other two vaults are full, there will be around 3 million different species of plants stored here, with over 500 seeds per sample. So one day there may be over a billion seeds stored inside this mountain representing the vast majority of Earth's agricultural diversity. And you don't know today what kind of, of, of seeds that you can grow in 20, 30, 40 years from now because of the climate change. Perhaps you, you, you have to use an, another type of, of seed uh, 30 years from now that can handle warmer climate, drier climate, wetter climate, whatever yeah. is going to, to happen. So, <laughs> so that is why it's uh, so important to have a backup of all these seeds so that you are sure that you can also grow the food we need in for the next generations to come. But this isn't the only seed bank on Earth. There are around 1,700 other gene banks around the world run by different countries and organizations. And at a cost of $9 million to build the Svalbard Seed Vault and millions more to run it, it's worth asking whether this is a costly redundancy or a valuable insurance policy. And perhaps the best people to answer this question are the Syrians, who last year were the first to make a withdrawal from the seed vault. The gene bank in Aleppo in Syria is now out of order. It's been bombed. So uh, one third of the material that is kept uh, in here is now uh, taken down to Morocco and, uh, and Lebanon. Hmm. And this is some of the material that now has been returned, so to get uh, the material going again. That's why there's so this... That's why, why it's empty. Will those seeds actually be used to grow crops? Like, yeah, they will, yeah. Over the last 13,000 years, we have cultivated millions of species of plants. The agricultural revolution underpinned the technological and population explosions that made our modern lives possible. The risk of a real doomsday scenario is incredibly remote. But whatever happens, thanks to this outpost at the top of the world, at least our seeds are safe. <laughs> Hey, I'm currently on a train traveling from Washington DC to New York City, so I can't talk too loud. And actually, after Norway, I went to Seoul, South Korea, Los Angeles, Boston, New York, and Washington. So it's been some crazy travels for me. And on all of these travels, I've been listening to audiobooks from Audible, who also support Veritasium, which I'm very thankful for. If you didn't know already, Audible has like 250,000 titles in all areas of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. And if you go to audible.com slash veritasium, you can get a 30-day free trial of the website where you can just try out listening to a book. So if you're at all interested in listening to audiobooks, I highly recommend you check them out. And there's a book I can recommend to you. It is my favorite fiction book of all time. It's called Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Safran Foer. It is... I, I don't know, it's just such a complex, interwoven novel. You have to you have to read it or listen to it to really know what I mean. But you can check it out, you can download that book for free for a one month trial, or you can pick any other book of your choosing. So I really wanna thank Audible for supporting me and helping me go to all these amazing places. And I wanna thank you for watching. <laughs>